uh, web free cloud storage. What's it about? So um, I was asked to basically how do how does our project fit into web three and uh, uh, you know uh, where are we going and uh, with web three in terms of our own development? So I work for Zero Chain, which is a decentralized cloud storage. Uh, it's a four years project. And the reason when we started this was uh, back in 2018, uh, block, again, blockchain, people storing data on the blockchain was uh, you know, very expensive, was not doable. Then you know, how, how do we store data? And that was in, in tandem with the Web3 uh, movement where people wanted to have ownership and control of their data just as much as uh, they had or crypto was giving them control over their uh, money, over value transfer. So, so Web3 was is, an, is really a couple of events happening together. And recently there has also been data protection and regulations that are you know, advancing the narrative of Web3. So before you know, um, I explain our solution and where we fit into, whole, into this whole paradigm and how decentralized storage actually fit uh, with Web3, um, maybe uh, looking back at what was the web uh, uh, early 90s. So web, if you look at web one, uh, the period 20 years before 2000, that period was all about content being read off some server. Uh, it can be a home server, it can be your own computer. And then it was just HTML consumption of these websites. And as we progressed, then we got into Web2, which is what we have today, uh, which is a read and write. And there is an interaction with the data. It's uh, data-centric, let's call it that way. And as, as you're reading and writing and these applications are being developed, the reliability of the servers that are hosting these uh, applications or hosting this data became paramount. And as the amount of data grew, uh, that... Uh, that uh, responsibility on the service provider, whoever providing that application, also grew. So now there was a demand for reliability, and what we have today is these cloud storage companies, the big, the big companies, offering that service. And there is a, and the, you know, from 2006, you can say that the new cloud store, the new cloud was formed. Uh, as as that grew, the data. Uh, the, the, the economies of scale started playing part in this. So the data got siloed with these cloud providers and monetized in, you know, uh, in ways maybe that the user does not consent to. Uh, in fact, if you store uh, data on AWS or Google, even if you look at your Gmail data, you technically, if you look at the terms of conditions, which practically no one bothers reading through, you don't own that data. So even those, whatever is there is owned, for example, by Google in the example of Gmail. So a lot of data breaches started happening over the last uh, few years. And uh, that, that movement snowballed into the narrative, okay, now you're monetizing our data, we're the product. Uh, we're not getting any, any kickback even from you monetizing our data, like YouTube or, or Facebook, et cetera. So now we want ownership. And control and that again that movement is over it started with Bitcoin in the sense that they want sovereignty of their money now they want ownership and control on the data so people are moving to to claim back what um, to claim back some sort of sovereignty or control on whatever uh, they're transacting or, or generating so if I'm generating the data then I should be um, in full control and you know you should ask for my consent uh, same thing with money I want it to be I want to be the custodian of my money instead of it sitting in um, in a bank. That's the Bitcoin movement, for example. So those are aligned. And now, as as smart contracts uh, started coming up, we started seeing decentralized applications coming up uh, around 2017. And I remember I was in Hong Kong, I think, at that time, and people were building all kind of applications such as gaming applications. And uh, there were assets in these games that are technically there. You know, you, you 
you purchase with your ETH or whatever is a new wallet. So they are kind of a blockchain company, but the assets in that game was surprisingly, uh, you know, still on, on AWS or on Google. So the, the database of the user information and your, uh, you know, uh, progress in the game, your stats, all of that was not written on, you know, the, was still sitting in AWS. If someone hacked AWS account of that company that was providing that service, you've lost basically whatever you've earned in that game, despite that you have paid for it. So people realized people realized that, and then we had NFTs come in, for example. So now we have a new form of user-generated content. And at that point, go-to-market was more important than finding a solution for for the underlying problem. So uh, you know, when NFTs came about, it was um, a good progress in the sense that it created a market, and now that the consumer demand, people grew, and the people were worried that, wait a second, that NFT is stored, I've just paid, I don't know, a quarter million for that NFT, and that NFT is not stored on the blockchain, it's stored somewhere else that can go offline, and people don't realize that. Uh, maybe until today, so it's it's not spoken of or or discussed uh, uh, by by the consumers. And you know, consumers so, sometimes trust the service provider too much. So, in that sense, NFTs are not today are not uh, the underlying where you, the NFTs are being stored are not is not secure, and people can potentially lose. Uh, lose millions if the service goes down. So where, if I buy an NFT image for a million dollars and wherever that image is hosted today goes down tomorrow, then that NFT is worthless. Uh, so we're back where basically now we have centralized services uh, underlying this and saying, okay, we guarantee you that this NFT wouldn't go, wouldn't go down. Of course, that is as good as, as long as, the, as whoever is promising this, it stays in business. So then there was a movement, okay, let's go into IPFS. And the IPFS is interplanetary file system, which is a decentralized file system. Uh, it sort of gained popularity. Uh, again, NFTs made it even more popular. And uh, people start, started building incentive layers on IPFS. The issue is with IPFS is to, if, the, if the content is not read or is not consumed, the IPFS protocol basically has something called a garbage collection. It just deletes that data. So if your NFT is not being accessed that frequently, it's gone. Unless you subscribe to a pinning service where you basically say, I'll pay, and you just keep my NFT, you know, keep, uh, don't delete that, uh, that image. So again, now you're back into paid service and trusting the underlying uh, service provider. Um, then other decentralized projects started building incentive layers around IPFS and uh, basically incentivizing who is ever providing the pending to, uh, to keep it, but it, the user doesn't have to deal with it. The pending service basically is paid by the overlaying protocol and the, it's being subsidized. Now, that was one solution. And then uh, we had other solutions come up, but decentralized storage, unfortunately, right now is not Web3 suitable because it's all around catering to use cases, as in what's going, it, it's reactive to what's ever in the market. It's not built to, uh, as a holistic overview, as you know, to compete with the Web2 providers, as in on speed, on, uh, you know, on, on cost, maybe there is, there is a lot of progress on that front, but uh, on speed, you're lacking. On uh, durability of the data, on the availability of the data, you're still lacking. A lot of the decentralized storage is actually right now. If you look at it, it's archival. Uh, two of the most famous ones are Filecoin and um, Airweave. Uh, either either you have it, either either you have to pay, for example, for uh, a proof of Filecoin, and you have problems with latency, etc. And now this is being this is there is progress on that front. Or with Arweave, and you pay for uh, also this a niche of a niche actually with Arweave. You pay for not only archival, you pay for permanency. So you know, right now as we're speaking, uploading uploading one uh, 
one gigabyte of data to um, what we uh, cost, I, I believe, about, sorry, one terabyte costs you about $8,000 today. And that's permanent. But that is, that is very, very expensive. If you, you know, that's about 100 years paid upfront on AWS. So I don't think you, I don't think an application developer would be, you know, unless that data is important or small in size, the, it's a niche of a niche. So decentralized storage still has ways to go. And where, where we come in this whole picture is, um, before that, actually, the other issue is, uh, as I said, it is archival storage that we have. And there is no solution on uh, on the reading side, on the consumption side. So all the nodes on these uh, decentralized storage networks uh, are actually acting as archival, not because they want to act as archival, because the, the reward doesn't make sense. Because the, if 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 the read if the data is as a not uh, as a being sorry as in being cons uh, uh, being consumed frequently. Then they start paying for bandwidth costs, and you know there is no incentive from the networks to cover those uh, bandwidth costs. So where we come in, as we said, okay, look, we want to be on the enterprise level. We want we uh, we don't want to dictate what should what should the price be in uh, tokens or in a, on uh, or um, on our side. We want to create a market. So we have our uh, node providers or storage providers competing with each other for the benefit of the user. So that is very different than, for example, AWS or uh, Google, where basically if you're not a very large data provider, you have no negotiation power. On our side, you do have a negotiation power. because you, It doesn't matter if you have a negotiation power or not, because the, side, the, the, the storage providers are competing for, every, for your benefit. So they, they're blind to the size of data that's coming in. So they need to provide, what, um, you know, relative to each other, the best pricing they could. So even the small guy gets a fair price for in comparison to the, um, you know, uh, a large volume data provider. So we are democratizing the price in, in that sense. The other issue is sharing of data. Uh, right now, decentralized storage is, you know, if I want to share of data, share data, we cannot. That feature does not exist today. So we do. We leverage some proxy re-encryption protocols to allow sharing of data, so that the end user is uh, having the same that he would get from AWS or Google. So now, in doing so, we're 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 taking this storage, if you will, into another form where it can integrate with the ethos of Web3, right? But be comparable to centralized service providers with the incumbents today. Um, of course, I'm, uh, listening to the talk, it sounds like the promise for decentralization uh, and file storage really hasn't gone the way that everything else has been going in the Web3 side. Um, besides yourselves, um, are there many other um, organizations focusing on delivering on that vision? Well, as I said, yes, there is There is. Um, there is Filecoin, there is are we uh, uh, providing decentralized storage? Uh, they're doing it more on the archival side, where right. from the enterprise side, as in we to provide on uh, the services on par with the centralized ones. No, I, we have I, the, 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 fe the features. When we talk about features, it's easy to talk about sharing, for example. But sharing is more complex than it sounds. Um, unfortunately, when you come to dealing with decentralized protocols. No, I appreciate that. And do you have any gut feeling for when uh, some of the more popular centralized uh, companies are going to come into the decentralized space? I mean, will, do you expect to see something from Google, from Amazon, from Dropbox? Well, I can't speak about what we've been doing recently. So what we we recently, this is public information, what we we recently partnered with uh, Huawei, actually, uh, Huawei uh, Singapore. And uh, they realize this, and they, they, at the end of the day, their infrastructure, as an infrastructure provider, they saw a play there. Because the thing is, with these conglomerates, also they are, they are, they are selling, they're selling you uh, uh, cloud time. They're selling you, you know, uh, uh, package service. 
So they all, you're, sometimes you might be competing, the, department, the inner departments might be competing with themselves. So, for example, Huawei said to us, we want to sell infrastructure, right? If, if you guys are providing that platform, we don't care how, who buys our infrastructure. Right. So they are coming in that sense. So they want they want to see how it progresses. They don't want to miss out. They do have startup programs to accelerate. Uh, you know, once the relationships are involved, they they want to accelerate certain projects, but they're not. They 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 move slow. And I'm you know, I, Google has been recently hiring a lot of blockchain engineers on that front. But still, uh, what I think would end up happening is either they would acquire. Or, or or acquire a decentralized company that that is functioning on Filecoin, for example. Uh, you cannot acquire the protocol. You can acquire a company that is has built something on this protocol, right. rather than set up their own protocols. You see what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, no, I I understand that. I'm just curious, you know, whether the timing was going to be and where you saw the uh, opportunities for others to uh, make their mark. I think. These companies developing, um, I mean, if you look at um, Facebook, Facebook tried to enter the um, the crypto sp the crypto space, right? And yeah, but they got and all the, yeah, and all the regulation they would need to find, they, would, they cannot copy a decentralized network without dealing with tokens. And the minute they touch tokens, they don't want to do that because they're so it has to be. What I believe it has to be uh, more of a people's movement, and then they would integrate into it rather than them leading the way. I think the people here would lead the way, uh, the open source community would lead the way, rather than uh, enterprises stepping in uh, as uh, you know as um, regulated companies. With some of the other elements of Web three that's actually finding traction and growth. Uh, the decentralized file space just seems to be, uh, you know, still wide open, and, and as you point out, uh, slow to be adopted for lots of really interesting reasons. And so I'm just wondering if um, there was something missing in the original vision, or it was just you know early. I think I think I think we're early. I mean, what I if you look at, we're not early as in ahead of our time. Early as in. We're just starting in the sense that if you look at Web 1, it took about 20 years. And Web 2 is right now at the end of those 20 years. Uh, it seems, uh, you know, when Web 3 narratives uh, came, uh, came up, uh, which is recently, Web 2 has been approaching 20 years. And it seems that, you know, every 20, 20 years of narrative is changing. And maybe it's a, it's a fluke that this 20, 20, uh, you know, this 20 years in this case. It's cert it seems there is uh, every 20 years the narrative is uh, changing and a new technology is being um, adopted. So I wouldn't say, as you said, IPFS came 2015. Uh, maybe early in this uh, decade, I think we would see uh, you know it, Web3 snowballing and the decentralized storage snowballing. Um, so decentralized storage is, I think, is very important to Web3 because at the end of the day. Um, the ethos of Web3 would not be complete without actually um, decentralizing underlying. You need to store these assets somewhere, and decentralized storage needs to be there. Well, I, I appreciate your time with us today. I appreciate the conversation. I want to thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts and sharing uh, the vision on um, where we are with uh, today in, mm -hmm. uh, with, with uh, you know, called Web3 uh, cloud storage. Uh, th thank you for very um, uh, Mo. Thank you so much for being part of uh, Blue Lava 2022. Thank you for having me. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.